The Play's The Thing, with your host, Judy Sleed. I just have to tell you that the last time Seth Redless did a new promo on me, his question was, name from the top of you had 12 people who were on your show. And I was, I just couldn't think of anybody. Can you imagine that, Jeff? Uh, you couldn't think of, like, me, your son. Yeah, I mean, I interviewed you and I couldn't think of you. How well, did Mom, that happen? Sometimes I forget about you too. <laughs> but you know, uh, Michael Dickerson, the yes. director of the show, wanted to bring to your attention that this is a celebration of sorts. It's a, a taste of and a toast to your 268th show. So we oh got us some champagne. God. Oh, how wonderful. And he wants me to open this. <laughs> yeah, well, careful. Should I be pointing it at my eye? Oh. No, I'll point it at oh, your eye. Careful. Oh, oh, okay. oh, my gosh. Careful. All right. Oh, you did it. You're a genius. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, to your 268th show. Yes. Mother. No wonder I'm so tired. Doing um, so many shows, it's I incredible. think that's a record for the, the network. Um, I think you surpassed uh, Lois. Yes, you think so? I'm just making this up. Well. Cheers to 268. Maybe you have another 268 shows. Oh, thank you, thank you. Are we allowed to drink on TV? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is delicious. It's great. I may have had some too fast, but anyway, kidding. So, how come I forget all these people? You know, when you're in your 50s, you just start forgetting <laughs> things. Yes. And uh, I know it happens, you know, I can understand you forgetting me, you know, I'm only your son. Yes. <laughs> but I can't uh, imagine that you would forget your good friend Tommy DeMeo because he's probably been on the show more than anybody. He must have been on my show like six, seven times. So uh, How did I forget him? Especially on this one particular show, I remember he surprised you because it was your birthday. Do you remember that one? Oh, right. Happy birthday, Judy, Judy, Judy. Oh. oh, how did you know it was my birthday? Oh, thank you. Because you told everybody <laughs> in the world it was your birthday. How did we know it was your birthday? Today is a special yeah, day Yeah, I was for you. wondering, were you there? <laughs> well, I was actually there. You in were? In spirit. I mean, I, now I'm glad you opened that door, because um, I'm interviewing Judy today. I'm one of her best friends, maybe our only friend. <laughs> <laughs> Joke. Uh, but um, I know Judy for around 35 years, and she's had a, and has a remarkable life. So, Yes, I did have a remarkable life, and how could I forget that? I don't know. Did at you forget that, that you had a remarkable life? <laughs> well, at that moment, let's just say I forgot everything. I guess so. You know what's good? That you don't have to forget things these days because of the technology that we have now. Your good buddy Steve from the library puts all your shows on YouTube. So even if yes. you forget, you can watch them on YouTube. And I know Steve is a, a good friend of yours as well. Somebody else oh, has been on yes. the show, right? Steve and Dino Spataro. He is a wonderful, wonderful guy. And I did a show with him. How could I forget that? I don't know. Let's see what he had to say. Well, we had, we had <laughs> um, Charla Krupp in June. She had a book called How Not to Look Fat. <gasps> and um, <laughs> it was extremely yeah. well attended. Yes, I'm and sure. <laughs> We actually have footage of that on our on our library YouTube, uh -huh. um, but we've had such a variety of author talks. We had um, Tom Clavin spoke oh. about his book um, One for the Ages. It was about the Masters um, competition. Yeah, golf he was on my show in Augusta in '86, and mm -hmm. 
We had Dr. Lou Gross. He uh, spoke about his semi-autobiographical uh, novel, Montauk Tango. And <laughs> we just, we, we've had quite a variety. We had um, Jeffrey Sussman. Um, he spoke about his book, No Mere Bagatelles, which was about uh, Judith and Gerson. Yeah, Lieber. I, yes. As a matter of fact, Judith's supposed to come on my show. I have to call her. I remember that. That was that author talk was very very well attended. Mm. And, and do uh, you also sell books at that time? The the authors are very welcome to bring their books, and mm. um, they can they could sell them, and mm -hmm. uh, they they sign them, and the people enjoy that. Uh, yes. We had. Um, Recently, we had um, Sylvia Lara. She had her book, Savoring the Hamptons. <laughs> and so you never know if it's a food book, because yeah. sometimes, like, like Sylvia brought um, crackers with caviar and shiitake mushrooms with her. Yeah, because uh, she has a cooking column in the paper. And, and dance, right. And yeah. everybody enjoyed the, the crackers. Yeah. <laughs> And um, and Dr. Dr. Gross, he's actually he's a, a dentist in the city, but he owns the Gig Shack out in Montauk. So when he did his talk, mm -hmm. he brought uh, some desserts from the 668, the Gig Shack, which were delicious. <laughs> they went like right like that. <laughs> yes. Um, but for for the author talks, I usually put out refreshments. I put out drinks and popcorn and. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, well, that's, I, I don't know how I could forget Stephen. I mean, he's fabulous. And it puts <laughs> yeah. all, what do you have, like 200 of your shows, of your 268 now shows on YouTube, something like that? Yes, and he put that on for me. I mean, he's a fabulous guy, and very talented. He works with somebody else at the library who I know was a guest of yours, right? Yeah, he works. Dennis Fabisak, he's a... He's a director, yes, and uh, he's wonderful. He was on my show. I See, you know. forget all these people. Now we have the people from the library, first Steve and now Dennis. Yes, Dennis. I started working in libraries when I was 17 years old. Really? Um, you know, so I've now been in libraries for 24 years. Um, I've worked in the, the Mastic Library. I've worked in the Smithtown Library, the Hampton Bays Library. Uh, and finally, I found myself in East Hampton. And how did you get that first job in the library? Was it like a summer job from school? Uh, yeah, after school job, working in high school, uh, putting books on the shelf, helping people with photocopies. Did you find a job yourself or your parents helped you? Uh, I found it myself. Yeah. Wow, that tells a lot about you. Yeah. Yes, and you earned some money? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was the kind of... the time when you had to pay your own way and if you wanted something you had to you know work for it and my parents were big believers in, in having me work for what I wanted to get so I would appreciate it. Yeah um, that's very good. What uh, did what did your father do? Or what did um, he do? My father retired from Suffolk County working for Child Protective Services and uh, he's relocated to Virginia and now he's a massage therapist <laughs> and loving life. Uh, and him and my mother purchased a 12-acre piece of property, and now they have donkeys and wow. fruit trees, and, and they're living in the country, and they really love it there. So you pay I don't see how I, I could forget Dennis. He's so charming. I find him extremely handsome. Well, <laughs> yeah. and you forgot a guy like that. And somebody yeah. else who you forgot is oh. now a, a star, right? I mean, I oh. know the next thing we're going to look at is with, um, there are a cast of people, they're promoting, I guess, a, was it a play that they were doing? Oh, the, the uh, Red Herring, yes, right. they were. And so I know we don't know the names of everybody who is in this next clip, but one of them is Michael Nathanson, who is becoming a real important star in Hollywood. A real legitimate star you're talking about. Yes. And here he was, just a regular guy talking on the show, and now he's... Yeah. What's the name of the, he's in a movie now? It's side effects. So. Yes. I mean, I always thought he was extremely talented. Good eye for that. Yes. So he's with a bunch of people uh, yeah. discussing this play, 
at the time, uh, Red Herring. Red and I guess Herring. he's going to be the young, youngest guy there. The best looking. The best looking one will be Michael yes. Nathanson. <laughs> yeah. How much time did you put into rehearsing so far? Oh, uh, we've done a lot. Uh, this is our third week. And uh, we're rehearsing, you know, about four or five hours a day. Um, we've been in the theater uh, many, this week. I think this is, I think this is actually week? our this is actually fourth our fourth week. week. Yeah. Wow. yeah. How many days a week? We've been doing five. We've been doing uh, in the beginning. It was about four day, four to five days, and now it's been five to six days a week. Um, so it's for it's four hours for, yeah. for about four hours at a time. And but like I said, because you have to deal with six actors playing eighteen characters in so many scenes. Well, no, it's that's like directing wonderful. eighteen actors. Yeah. In, a, in a sense. So Not it's, to mention all the costumes and props and odds and ends. And yeah. all that. So my it, job is to isn't simplify. Isn't it difficult to find actors to spend so much time for rehearsals? It's difficult to find actors, to certainly yeah. talented actors like we have. Yeah. 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 We're we, uh, blessed to have an extremely talented cast. So they are just all like artists that uh, take, if the words were paints, they're able to transpose them to a beautiful painting. So we're very fortunate to have them. And uh, everyone in our cast is, is, has done a lot and has worked professionally for a number of years. And so they, they bring a lot of experience and maturity and talent to this project. And it's really, across the board, an amazing ensemble. Definitely, I just want to uh, reiterate that. You, you are in the union? I am. Um, I'm in the, the Actors' Equity, and I'm also in SAG, which is the Screen Actors Guild. But three of the six members of the cast are in uh, Actors' Equity. Yeah. And what are, you, what are your plans for this play after it finishes at Guildhall? Uh, no plans at the present. Broadway. 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 <laughs> We're going to Broadway. Broadway. Feature films, you know, the usual. No, I'm talking about this particular play, Red Herring. Uh, uh, it would be nice to move it somewhere, but right now... Yes, so how would you go about moving it? Well, it's, it's something that needs to be done in advance, you know, speaking to other theaters and try to move it into another theater, possibly doing a swap where uh, Red Herring would come to their theater and possibly their show would come to Guild Hall. But that, that's a lot of uh, work and... and, and uh, right now we're hoping a lot for of a, work. We'll have right a very successful run you here. You seem to be very uh, good at working things <laughs> out. Yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, 24 hours a day practically, so uh, i just like to get this one up and then worry about the next well, one. Well, you have to hire somebody. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, I'll be very happy to help you with well, this. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I mean, I would, I would tape it and I would send it to all over uh, TV stations and uh, let people see it and uh, follow up. Everything you do, you have to follow up. If you don't mm -hmm. follow up, they're not going to contact you. Mm -hmm. In my experience, it's true. It's this business true. is hard. It's a very tough business, and you just have to persevere and. And it's all about relationships mm -hmm. in this business and, you know, it's very much about who you know and how well you get along with everybody and, and that's yeah. a very important Just part make sure of it. you don't antagonize anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and you really that comes That comes with the territory, <laughs> though. <laughs> and you really can't let go of it. Jonathan Peters is who brought all this. He was a producer. Okay, so, so I'm just that saying that, that girl could be, she's pretty enough, she could be famous, don't you right, think? Right, and it was Jonathan Peters. But who, Michael Nathanson was the guy who the you had director. your eye on yeah. for a long time because, yeah. you know, you were wearing short pants there. You had a little yeah. different hair. It's like yeah. we get to see mom through the ages. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's really neat to, for me to think that you had somebody who was a legitimate star on your show before he was a star. Right. So anybody who ever wants to be on this show, just think, you know, Michael Nathanson. Michael yeah. Nathanson, we, we had that. So that's pretty right. good. So we should drink to that. Michael Nathanson okay. and uh, yes. famous people on the show. This is your 269th show. Wow. Congratulations. Um, uh, yeah. Mom, Judy. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> okay. You can call You'll me Jeff. You'll never forgive me. You'll never forgive me for forgetting you. And who else did I forget? Um, well, I'll tell you somebody who you didn't forget. Um, the guy who we hear every week at the beginning of your show Oh, who is a very good friend of yours, Lee. Lee Davis, yes. How could I? I even interviewed him. And I remember one time Lee was trying to steal your job because uh, actually I was in a play, uh, as you remember, here in the yes. Hamptons uh, 
back at the end of 2011, and your guest that day was one of the guys I was in the play with. Right. And so Lee, trying to uh, take away your job, decided he was going to do the interview. So this was Lee interviewing Colby. Right. And what's your name? Colby Herbst. Colby Herbst? Yes. And you're Judy's guest today? Yes. What do you do? Well, I'm an actor. You're an actor? Yes. You're a pretty young actor. I just got out of high school. J just got out of high school? Yes. Where did you go? West Hampton Beach. Uh-huh. Where are you going to go to college? No, I'm taking a break to do various shows, and then I plan on doing an internship. Terrific. Terrific. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> so that was Lee. Yeah. That so was, he is he's a terrific guy. He introduced most of my shows. Yeah. Yeah. The Judy, um, Judy, Judy. Judy, yes, yes. And so, now everybody calls me Judy, 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 like he does. He even thinks he looks like Cary Grant. <laughs> oh, the, the original actor who made that line famous. Supposedly. Supposedly. Yes. Well, I know we saw an actor who has made it uh, a while back in Michael Nathanson. And uh, I know the next three people who you interview, me being one of them, yes. the other two are stars in the making, <laughs> my two children. I don't see how I possibly forgot that. So, they came in from Texas just to be on my show. <laughs> You know, the budget oh. was big. You gave them a nice uh, stipend for, for appearing. And uh, yes. they're my kids, and I'm very proud of them. And um, I think yes. you get to hear them sing a couple of songs, at least one of them. Maybe if we have time, we'll, we'll hear two of them. But uh, without further ado, here are my children, Jordan, my son, and my daughter, McCartney, along with me and Mom. Well, one of the things you're going to do on my show is to sing. And you play the ukulele, and you're going to sing, McCartney. Okay, let's do the first voice. song. You have a beautiful voice. Ready, McCartney? And uh, I heard you sing before, and uh, okay, so can you pick it up? Jordan. Hello, Jordan. <laughs> I Stop, staring you could... Stop staring at yourself. Stop staring at yourself. Stop staring at yourself. And McCartney, okay, what are you going to do for What are you going to do? First. Press. What? No. Price Soul. Price tag, what is that? Okay, Hey Soul Sister by Train. Oh, I know that song. That's a good song. Train. I didn't know you guys knew that. Yes, yes. I do. Cool. Hey, hey, hey. Your lipstick stains on the front lobe of my left side brain. I knew I wouldn't forget you, and so I went and let you blow my mind. You sweet moonbeam, the smell of you in every single dream I dream. I knew it with lighted, you're the one I have decided who's one of my kind. Ain't the Mr. Mister on the radio Stereo, the way you move ain't fair, you know Hey, soul sister, I don't want to miss a single thing you do We can't deny I, 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 I'm so obsessed My heart is bound to be right out my untrimmed chest I believe in you like a virgin, you're Madonna And I'm always gonna wanna blow your mind Hey, soul sister, ain't that Mr. Mister on the radio? Stereo, the way you move ain't fair, you know. Hey, soul sister, I don't want to miss a 
single thing you do tonight. Oh, that was very, very. Oh, they are just adorable. How could I forget? You know, them? that was a year ago. Um, yes. And I don't want to date this too much, but. Uh, in one year, they have improved so much from that, from what you just saw, from what we just saw. They auditioned for, um, I don't know if we're allowed to say the name of the show. Yeah. America's Got Talent. Yeah. And um, uh, out of like 3,000 kids in San Antonio where they live, they were the only ones that were written about or on TV. Mm -hmm. And they find out at the end of this month if they actually made it onto the show. Wow. And, they, uh, should, they certainly but, are I mean, it just, adorable. It, they improved <laughs> so much just from that. So Of course, we are not prejudiced. Not at all. I mean, no. I'm certainly <laughs> not. But, you know. um, they have, we could show them the rest of the show if it were yeah. up to me, but I know we want to get to a, a couple more people, and there's somebody who I don't know much about, but she looked very interesting when I was looking at her... Um, the clip that we're going to show of her, her name is Danielle. Danielle Rabani. She's a, a super star on the Yiddish theater. On the Yiddish theater? Yeah, that, that yes. would make a lot of sense because she, I think she's doing a Yiddish accent here, complaining yes. about her feet or something yeah. like that. Oh, God. That was really good. A lot of eyes again. Oh, the fieselech. My feet, they're killing oh, me. Oh. Um, yeah, she was oh. a funny character. Oh, yeah. yeah, this that is was great. She's great. She's such a sweet girl. And that's her thing, Yiddish acting. Yiddish acting. I just offered her a role in my play if she could find me a producer. Okay. <laughs> she said she will let me know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. My goodness. All right, so maybe we should drink to that. I oh. <laughs> we have one more guest. Yes. One more to one round more. out the show. I don't and you know said how he's I a. I could possibly forget him. He's a Tony Award winner from Call Me Madam. And uh, God bless him. He's still around. He lives around here. Maybe you should say his name Russell Knipe. Russell Knipe. And it yes. ends with. The two of you kind of singing together. That was one of my favorite songs. But my son and my granddaughter. Oh, me and, you too. Know, thing. Me too. Because uh, I'll be fine, you know. Uh, I'm only have a few more. But years, let me ask few you more something. years, and I'll be finished. What? Well, what would it help that you worry? How would it help the situation? If I worried? Yeah. No, I don't believe in worry. <laughs> There's no, there, but you, know, you just said you worry about your son. Oh, your, about them. Well, like, yeah. let's say I'm concerned about their future. Yeah. Right. Because uh, mm. my, in my lifetime, it can't be so terrible. The whole, well, you know, who knows? Oh, but maybe I worry another about their, 20, 30 their years. I think about their future, but, uh, but as far Don't as I'm concerned. Don't you think you'll be around 20, 30 years? Beg your pardon? Don't you think you will be around? In 20 and oh, 30 years. Oh, I doubt years. it. I doubt it very much. No. <laughs> People live I doubt long it very now. Much. Yes, well, I still play tennis three times a week. I play See all that? summer long. I'm out there. And I love playing tennis. And, uh, and you are and, healthy? Yes. Yes, so, I don't take any pills or anything. Well, and that's my what? only thing I take is vodka at 5 o'clock. <laughs> oh. I believe in him. And as a matter of fact, it's really marvelous. You picked up the paper. And there's a, a bit, the other day was another article that said you should, a person over 65 should have at least two drinks a day. Is that I was right? all for that. <laughs> <laughs> not during the daytime. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Not, not before five o'clock. Before yes. dinner. And they, te they, they, they say it's very good for you. Yeah. And so I'm glad they think so. Yes. And I just go along for my health, you see. Did you write them a letter how much you appreciated what they said? No, I don't. I've never written anybody any letters. No, no. fan letters for me. No. I used to write fan letters, but I don't, I don't, I don't do a lot of things what I used to do. Well, we can grow up and not bother doing it either, you know. Yes. Yes. I, I sometimes wonder when I see the shows that are so successful, it turns out that, the, on television particularly, the shows that are the most successful, I never watch. I just find them yeah. boring. 
Me I think that I, think <laughs> I hate to say that, but me yes, too. Yes, I think that I think the I shows watch that are watched by all these millions of people. Uh, I don't happen to have the taste of millions of people, which may be unfortunate, but it's just true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just uh, I like I will watch all the, uh, the political things. I love to watch them, and and uh, that's about it on television. Well, we ran through all these pictures and a lot of things, and the half hours just going, going, gone. Well, that's good. So for an encore, I think, well, at first I want to thank you for coming. Thank and you. I want to thank Evan and Lee and all my underwriters. And I think we could go out with singing that song. You, you think so? Yes. I don't would know. You, <laughs> would you mind? <laughs> I hear singing and there's no one there. I smell blossoms and the trees are bare. All day long I seem to walk on air. I wonder why, I wonder why. You better sing a little of Ethel's part. <laughs> okay. You don't need analyzing. And it's not so surprising that you feel very strange but nice. Your heart goes Peter patter and I know what's the matter because I've been there once or twice. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Nice job, Mom. <laughs> oh. Who was that lady with the red hair we were just watching? Yeah, I was wondering. I'm now I'm blonde. Go figure. Uh, yeah, well, I keep changing the color of my hair. Um, you know, this was a, an incredible task, and Lena yeah. Terjopovic, did I say that right? And yes. Michael Dickerson did an incredible job putting all of this together, and we are so yeah. grateful to them for all they did for this show, which and was very I difficult to produce. I just want to say, Jeff, you did a wonderful job, and I just want to say he's available. All those gorgeous Love girls. <laughs> Very talented and uh, with two beautiful children. So don't forget to call in. Uh, we'll talk to anyone. <laughs> it's like a dating show now. It's yes, become. yes. And uh, I'm just so happy I was able to uh, do this show with you. And we could do some more like this. We'll wait for with another 268. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. And of course, this heart came from Tommy DiMeo and the rings. He's always supplying me with gifts. So we should say a tire. What? A tire, Tommy DiMeo. A tire by Tommy DiMeo. Exactly. Yeah, and he used to have a boutique, and this shirt, this vest came from his shop when he had it. Yes.